Hello there, darlings. Welcome to the Clockwork Cabaret. You're probably going to have some questions after this episode. I'm not sure who has the answers. You could try asking Emmett, but I'm fairly certain she has no idea what's going on either. And now, on with the show. <laughs> Clockwork Cabaret. Hooray! I am Emma That sounded disingenuous. Hold on. Hooray! <laughs> I, I am Emmett Davenport. And I am Lady Adderkop. And, uh... It's 2020, y'all. It is. And guess what? It hasn't stopped fucking with you yet. <gasps> and she That's said a dirty bull- word. I know, because we said we were going to rip the band-aid off the cussing. Yeah. <laughs> we, earlier this year, we were being, we were being uh, demure. We, we just played songs with cusses in them. Yeah, now it's, now, now all bets are off. Hide your children. Hide your children, your pets, your octogenarians. They should what? be someplace safer than your house. 2020 is a nightmare. It's trying to kill them. Hide <laughs> them! Put them away! 2020 has has uh, has affected us just as much as all of our friendly listeners. It is It has been a thing. It has been a thing. And uh, one of which, if you are a long-time listener, you will have noticed that the podcast... All of the archives and the old episodes have disappeared, and there was a reason. And uh, your, you know, your dear friend Emmett Davenport may have been a more more of a criminal than uh, she would have led you to believe. <laughs> all this time, listeners, all this time, all this time, she was laying the blame firmly on my pale, freckled shoulders. I mean, oh, Lady Adakov is the the shoplifter. I mean, t- to be fair, you did a- do a lot more crimes than I did. <laughs> the one that faked her doctorate. She's the one that gives medical advice in a way she should not in a secret location behind a Walmart. She's the one. She's the problem. Right. I don't She's remember the doing lawyer that. Entertainer. Turns out I was not the one. I wait, told wait. y'all. You're trying to blame me for your own crimes. No, no. I'm trying to blame you for your crimes. No, no, no. I have totally different crimes. <laughs> she brought... I'm start. Listeners? Listeners. <laughs> 2020 has revealed... Laid a lot of things bare. Mostly I how many times that. in a row I can wear pajama pants. But <laughs> other than that... Also, I'm starting to believe that I was brought on to this podcast under false pretenses. Were you? Mm-hmm. Huh. I Wonder- thought I was brought on because I was funny. I was delightful. My taste in music was good. Turns out that wasn't it. Well, I was brought on as a shield, as a cover for Emmett's criminal masterminding. <laughs> See, when she was breaking the law all these years, breaking the law. Like, she could just shunt that off to me. She's the one with a parole officer, you know, uh, special agent Manson. What? Man, man, Mannington. I have not been convicted or tried yet. Uh, yet. <laughs> no, um, yeah. Time. This whole time, I was here only to be the fall person, the fall adder cup, the Scape- her the sc- criminal I- empire. I prefer the phrase scapegoat. I like fall person. 
because I didn't. This is not on me for once. <laughs> for <laughs> once, I am innocent. I'm. I'm pleading. New the... sensation. I don't like it. I believe it feels... I'm. I would like to plead the fifth on the grounds that it will incriminate me. <laughs> I don't like this. I like being in on the con, Emmett. I'm just saying, if you had told me from the beginning... Oh, that this was a whole... I was only here to help you shunt responsibility. And to, put, and to put one over on the man. That's all. Put one over on the man. That's what, all, that's what this whole thing has been about the whole time. Oh, but I love putting one over on the man. I'm just hurt I just, you didn't trust me. I just didn't wasn't sure. You look you 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 seem to have the constitution of someone that would fold under pressure. I love You would fold like origami. No. I look pale and like wet rice paper. I can't help that I'm a ginger. It's just what we look like. <laughs> But underneath the pale, veiny, gross, translucent skin, there are bones of steel. Really? There are bones that say things like, be gay, do crimes. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. Trust me. All these years. I'm and sorry. And we been committing so many more crimes so many better crimes than playing songs illegally well, it. this is baby shambles you don't know what else I've been up to we could have had an MLM by now I don't even know what that means oh multi-level marketing is not technically a pyramid screen because pyramid isn't in the name we could have had so much. And now it's 2020. Oh, it's too late. But, but Lady Addercup, don't you understand? The, the Clockwork Cabaret. In, her, in the system has been laid bare. But the Clockwork Cabaret can be a, a multi level marketing strategy. If you can get 10 other people to do this show for us, <laughs> you and your friends. You and your friends. And they can send us $300. <laughs> Would you like to break into the new and lucrative and podcasting, podcasting experience? Good news. You can join the Clockwork Cabarets. Uh, I, will I will give you a podcast name. I will make you, I will, I will design a whole entire podcast thing around you. Just pay a lofty fee of $300. <laughs> An no. affordable fee. Okay, an affordable fee. No, no. It's a one-time Low, low interest. A nine hundred dollar value. We're gonna give it to you for three hundred dollars because you are are not our listeners. You are our <laughs> friends. You are our friends. You get our friend discount. No, we're we're not gonna do that because that that is totally wrong, and that's no, what no, got me in trouble. Is enough of a and that's what got me in trouble in the first place. Here. No, so. <laughs> So Wait, if did you were you running an MLM on top of playing illegal music? I I have to plead the fifth on the grounds that it will incriminate me. I'm just No, I I'm didn't. Hurt. I I wasn't doing any of that. Trust I me. was too busy. I was too busy with other things. I'm hurt you didn't think I that I would be in I was too it. busy selling snake oils. I I had a cure. I had a cure for COVID. <laughs> that was a, oh. You know what it is? I know what the I know what the cure for COVID is. Stay the fuck home. Put a mask on. I was gin I, I was just selling ginger ale. I just solved it. Drink no, it. I know. I like mine better. Okay. Stay home, put a mask on, wash your fucking hands. Yeah, there you go. Also, Hi, listeners. This is what we I actually sound like. This Which is how if you follow me on Twitter, you already know. Yeah, no, we're 2020 has laid bare the fact that we have potty mouths. Uh, mm. And after 12 long years of keeping our mouths shut <laughs> and and being well behaved, this is what 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 the what it has wrought. What it has wrought. I don't, uh, 
I feel like I should apologize, but I'm not going to. Because that's it's where we all are. Because that's what. Because 2020. That's 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 where we all are right now, <laughs> and and uh, yeah. So if if our new thing, our new thing for the podcast is we will still do music. Uh, in order to hear the music p- portion of our podcast, you will have to go to our Mixcloud page, which is mixcloud.com backslash that darling DJ duo. And the, and the podcast episodes with the music will be there. Um, or you can go to agonyauntstudios.com and the music will be there as part of a supplement to the podcast episode itself. Um, we cannot do the podcast like we used to. Because no. fair use laws have changed, and I, we we don't make enough money with this uh, podcast to warrant getting lawyers to argue that every, what we do is in it, the realm of fair use. Yeah. Uh, so 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 hey. yeah. So this is how this is what we have done instead to do a workaround. Um, yeah. And, uh, we're both still music nerds. We yes. both still love finding new music. So we may tell you about songs and bands and things. Yeah. Uh, and they will be on the supplemental pages, uh, but they will no longer be a part of the main podcast. Yeah, it's it's an unfortunate side effect. Um, this was the only way that I could figure out how to continue to do what we do to mm. share new music with, with everybody without having to deal with uh being consistently shut down um we our podcast our podcast after 12 years our podcast got shut down and yeah. they and they wouldn't tell us exactly what episode was the problem so they just took everything away um which which b- becomes a fun game of which episode yes. of the clockwork cabaret was the one yeah, that did like, it like do i remove just that episode okay <laughs> But you won't tell me which one it is. So I'm just gonna... All right. So yeah, so that's one of the reasons why... And that ignores the, the multitude of musicians that sent us yes. stuff to yeah. play. So we don't think it was them. No, no. It's... it's it, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, with, with the way 2020 has been going... Uh, it could just be that this that this law changed a while ago, and they just now finally got through the backlog yep. of things because everyone's working from home and trying to find busy work to do. Who knows? I don't know. I personally blame Billy Idol. Well, who doesn't? Well, I think a hundred percent. You know, after his motorcycle accident, he's never been the same. He's been kind of a jerk. You know, uh, not. It might he didn't take the he might didn't take Johnny the Rotten. he didn't take the breakup very well. No. It might have been Johnny Rotten. It might have been might not have even been a clockwork episode that I was on. It might have been all oh, those years ago old. when you you and Claude it talked was about Johnny Rotten's butter, butter commercials. Or the fact that Dave Vanian liked corn dogs? Oh, it's Dave Vanian. It was the slander against Dave Vanian. And lo and behold, love of corn dogs. yes, lo and behold, what? Dave Vanian has been a vegetarian the whole time, and he is offended by the fact that 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 we suggested. Called Morrissey, he was like, "Moss, what do I, Moss, what do I do?" And Moss is like, "You shut them down." Yes, it could because be. Who knows? Twenty twenty has been orchestrated by Morrissey the entire time. I. I honestly would not be surprised. Actually, I kind of feel bad about picking on Morrissey. His mom just died. And so I feel a little bad. A little bad picking on him. Really? Um, yeah. No, I do. He's an asshole. Mom, he's the worst. I feel worst. bad for his mom. The worst thing about Morrissey is Morrissey. Well, that's uh, honestly why I always thought he was celibate, was because the only person who could love him as much as he does was is himself himself which is proved by the sex scenes in his books yeah but i i do feel bad that his mom just all right because fuck 2020 yeah Yeah. i I could feel that it's oh Oh. i'm sorry i've just made everyone feel empathy for morrissey i know what is a better person this has just changed the whole tone of the show we've 
2020. This is the the year we forgive Morrissey for like five minutes. Ugh. It's over now. Done. Ugh. I feel like we're gonna have to hating on him. All right, we're gonna take a break, a commercial break, a sponsor break. Fifteen minutes already, really? It has. Shit, Look at that! It this? goes by real fast. We're gonna take a also get used to that. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna take a sponsor break, um, so that we can give a moment of silence for Morrissey. For Morrissey? <laughs> no, that's not. Don't laugh at that, Nicole. That's bad. <laughs> No, be serious. A moment of silence for all the corn dogs that um, David Damien has horfed over the years. Do you suffer from the horrendous ailment of omnitism? Oh, it hurts everywhere. So many of us do, having never realized that there is a simple and easy cure. With the introduction of Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil a healing antiseptic liniment, you can be free from crippling omnitism. This amazing new oil can be used both internally and externally, but is best when used in combination. Headache? Phineas can cure that. Gut rot? Phineas can cure that. Bunions? Eye strain? Toothaches? Phineas can cure all of that. Generalized, non-specific pain? Phineas can cure that too. Right away on a cloud of happiness. Using Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil. Dr. Phineas T. Norwood's patented omnitism oil, a healing antiseptic liniment. And that was our sponsors. So, you know, that's a thing that's now going to happen on a somewhat regular basis, I hope. Uh, so, you have a quack idea that you would like to, to, to advertise to the masses? Guess what? We got a platform. We, we now have a little, a little spot for you. Also, uh, one of the things I would like to do is our, our slight nod to Lushington's Lounge um, with a cocktail recipe for those who might like to, would like to drink. So if you are of drinking age and you and and you are capable and able and willing to to imbibe in some alcoholic beverages, uh, I have a I have a little I have a little cocktail for you. Um, this week we're gonna do a very standard, simple, old fashioned. You can steal this from your parents' medicine cabinet. Oh my, yeah. Like, all you need is whiskey. You mm -hmm. need two ounces of whiskey, a little bit of simple syrup, probably about like a half a shot, so half, half an ounce, um, and then a little bit of bitters and ice. That's it. It's all you need. Oh, it's the old fashioned. It is an old fashioned. It's an old fashioned, old fashioned. However, and I have done a uh, a slight modification in that I did not have any simple syrup, so I used maple syrup, <laughs> <laughs> and that put a plastic dinosaur in it. I was thinking of putting a piece of bacon, but I did not have any bacon. <laughs> Oh hello! I was gonna use some bacon as a as a stirrer, but hello. and then See? eat the bacon. Oh. Yeah, but I didn't I, have it. I have also done a modification on the old fashioned. It's just called an old lady, <laughs> which is called the old lady, <laughs> because my drinking habits are that of an old, old, old lady. I have also done the two shots of bourbon. A couple of dashes of bitters. I've also added ice. And I topped it off with a little, little club soda for extra salt. Because I'm not sweet. And 2020 can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> but I put a straw on it because I'm a lady. Yeah. Well, and and all of our listeners should, should understand that Lady Adder Cup doesn't like sweet things at all i do not anytime you give her something that is slightly sweet she just goes and adds more seltzer to it 
Mm-hmm. You give her a soda. <laughs> I Ooh, drink here. orange juice with seltzer now because it's a little too strong. Yeah. Here, have this cranberry juice. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no. It needs a little seltzer. I'm going to put a little fizz in there because. Also, it's a little too strong for me. Look, look. If I want cloyingly sweet, I will go down to the kindergarten and I will talk to children. I hate children, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is not a hurtful stereotype. I have family from New Jersey. This is what we sound like. <laughs> is- I don't need your bloody sugar. I eat. Like, we don't need that in here. I'm already fat enough. Don't need, I got sugar in the alcohol. What are you doing to me? I don't know. Trying to give me the shits? No. Put some club soda in there. You know what that does? Balances your sugars. Because you got a little bit of salt. That gives you that's, an umami. That's, that's a new word. It means don't give me sugary shit. It's the and this has been a alcohol review from my grandmother. <laughs> this is also explains why why uh, Lady Outer Cup drinks picklebacks. I will drink a pint glass full of pickle juice, and that is not a joke. I know. It's so gross. <laughs> we went to a bar, and the bartender was like, "If I filled this pint glass full of pickle juice, would you drink it?" And I went, "I would." Don't challenge me. Did it. Liver was not happy. (laughs) Kidneys also mad. But I got $20. I didn't even get $20. I just got a free glass of pickle juice. Oh, I got $20 from you. I didn't get no $20. I'll pay you. (laughs) Give me the fucking pickle juice. What's up? Hey, yo, don't make it weird. Come on. Come on. No, next time. This yes. has been New Jersey Corner. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, no, I don't like. Well, no, and if and and if you don't drink alcohol, um, for whatever Ooh. reason, I'm not gonna judge. Um, uh, I highly recommend just doing ginger ale and a couple and a couple dash, dashes of uh, bitters in the mm. ginger ale, and then. If you really want to get fancy, take, um, do some flip, put a little bit of, um, vanilla extract oh. into your ginger ale with the bitters. You know, just do, or if you're going to be, you make the lady at her cup way, uh, or add some seltzer. <laughs> fill your glass with seltzer. Just <laughs> throw a couple of dashes of bitters in that seltzer. It's delicious. It's very refreshing. I, I drink seltzer with bitters a lot i I drink seltzer with lime juice so or yeah or citrus it's good it's good it's just drink it it's fine it'll settle your stomach is your stomach okay it'll be good you look a little peaky in in 2020 i feel like anything that will settle your stomach is good (laughs) anything that will make you not poop yourself with stress (laughs) is good in our books yes (laughs) oh Because hands up, who's pooping themselves with stress? It's me. Hey. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, no, we're, this is the, the honest corner. <laughs> this is, oh, IBS. Hey, what's hey! up? <laughs> Woohoo! No, oh, that's not a hoop no. hoop. We no. can't do that. Please don't do that because our stomach makes And we me... have to go to the bathroom. That makes the whole day go way longer. Yeah, it's <sighs> just your whole day then. It's your whole day. Also, I'm discovering. That our generation seems to be a lot of IBS stress sufferers, which makes me just wonder if that whole laid back slacker attitude was just mostly a way of hiding the fact that we all had IBS. Self preservation is what it was. Hey, <laughs> like, can I take a ser- another serious moment away from Dave Vanian? <laughs> oh, were we having a Dave Vanian moment? <laughs> Chew those corn dogs, Dave. <laughs> sidebar hey gen x could you just chill out for a while could you be healthy for a few years yeah it's all i'm asking yeah just a few years just stay healthy watch that blood pressure maybe do some yoga drink some seltzer with some bitters in it i don't know 
Just chill yeah, out. Chill, okay? Yeah. Remember remember when we all didn't want to do anything? Like, I understand it was because we were paralyzed with fear and anxiety because yeah. we lived in a su- super uncertain time that was brokered on one end by nuclear annihilation and on the other end, the AIDS crisis. Yeah. Um, oh. And okay, no, Iraq that didn't war. go the way I was thought Iraq it was going to go. But can we just yeah. all chill out for a little while? <laughs> yeah. Just stop dying, please. And also put your pets on notice, because I don't... That also makes me sad. So everyone just cool it. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> just relax. Do Everyone... Let's uh, let's all realign our chakras and no. um, cleanse our auras and um, do some no. yoga breathing. No, no, is that not gonna be? Is that not a thing that we should be doing? I don't, I don't know. I grew up with hippies. Oh, I feel like you this grew is, up with hippies. I'm... I feel like this is a thing. Like now we do some transcendental meditation, no. and we try to uh, realign the world. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Mm-mm. I mean, it didn't work the first time, so let's Mm-mm. maybe try it again. I don't. Maybe no, no. Honestly, not happening. All right, never mind. Chakras feels good. Realign whatever you want. I mean, it's twenty. I feel like at this point, yeah, just just do whatever just makes you feel good. Relax. Just do what makes you do tomorrow. Yeah, just do whatever can get you through the day. I suppose. <laughs> don't hurt anybody else. You want to start a religion based on Zool? I will sign up for the newsletter. I don't care. <laughs> the whole, the whole th- line of it is just: Are you a god? No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, no, you're not a god. <laughs> All gods. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> this might make us some money. Let's uh, <laughs> pin that. Emmett. Like, what? Mark that in the. You're editing now, right? Like yes. you have to edit now yeah. that it's like a free form talk. Thing. I guess so. We have to edit it's out edit- like long awkward pauses like we did in the past. Oh yeah, totally. That's a thing that we've always done. I've yes. always I've always been an ace at editing all of the podcast mm-hmm. for good, years. Good, cool. For years. Uh, I, it's put a not pin like in that Zool idea like so we can okay. revisit that later. Oh, go back. And... Go back. That Zool Monetized. is a religion. Yeah, yeah, we can monetize that, right? Are you a god? Yeah. Okay, okay. You can throw another god, we're all gods? We're all gods. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're all gods in the eyes of ants. I don't know. You manifest the bad bitch you want to be in the yes. world? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, be the Ripley you want to be. That's a different movie franchise. Oh, I don't know. That's a... Yeah, yeah, no. The eighties you know. are a there's blur. There's potential there. There's potential there. Um, a lot of a lot of murder in the Alien franchise, though. It's still all about quarantine, though. It's true. Break quarantine, we all die. Oh, break right. quarantine, we all die. Yeah, no, it's all. Hmm. The the Alien movie is just a uh, it's a story of our time. Hmm. Okay, so then we cut here. Yeah, obviously. obviously yeah, we would never leave this in. Yeah, we wouldn't want to give other people our idea. No, no, no. We need to monetize that have, this. That we have stolen that's the from. World we live in. It's a capitalist nightmare. That we have stolen from someone else. Have we? <laughs> we stolen from I don't know. Else? I feel like I feel like Ghostbusters. <laughs> like, no, no, we're 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 making a new thing with Ghostbusters as our inspirational uh, interest board. Oh, and, um, okay. It's our dream. Bloggers. This is our dream board. I, I'm bad at MLMs. I'm I too don't... suspicious, so I'm trying to. Like, yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how to do that. I like to play the straight man to your to your to your I conniver, know. and it's very hard when you're when when we're I'm, both. I'm supposed workshopping to... live. Yes. <laughs> Like, this is a totally different. I'm just used to you going, okay, go with me on this. And then I go, oh, I'm oh, bad at MLMs. Okay. I'm too cantankerous by nature. But I feel like there's something there. Oh, wait, that's that's our new, um, that should be our new uh, t shirt. Maybe we get our all our uh, cantankerous by nature. Like, we're all it's, instead of naughty by nature, it's cantankerous by nature. Cantankerous by nature. <laughs> too suspicious for 
Facebook. That's, uh, that's so. not pithy. No, that's too much. It's too much. That's too truthful. It's too truthful. Oh, it's too real. That's why I'm never Ooh, on no, Facebook. It feels good. <laughs> it's nothing. That's why I'm never on Facebook. That's why our masks say fuckity bye on them. Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> if you can read what this mask says, you're too close. Yes. Ugh. Go away. <sighs> I'm have to. The fact that I have to buy fa- fashion masks is a thing I did not think. I did not put on my 2020 bingo card. Did not put that. I did not put UFOs on the 2020 <laughs> bingo card. Didn't put a lot of things on there. Apparently, there's a meteor. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna something? pass by us right before the election, cause, cause everything. <laughs> oh, oh, fun sci-fi, fun sci-fi fact that that's a complete segue that I'm just gonna go off the rails yeah. on. Anyway, I've oh. been rewatching uh, Deep Space Nine, and. Uh, <laughs> There was an episode that I ha- that I had to stop watching because it was too close to home. Because they go back in tr- time to twenty twenty four. Oh no! And there's like, like, there's there's squads of militia walking around Earth and like, like doing weird. And I was just like. Yeah, I can't do this. Like too close. Twenty twenty is, is too close. Deep Space Nine. Twenty twenty four is four <laughs> years away. I can't. This. I can't. Militia walking around. Why are you out here? It was like in the first two seconds. Oh God. Where are you supposed oh. to be? And I was like, Oh nope, nope, no. nope, <laughs> nope. Deep Space Nine, you've ruined me. <laughs> You have ruined me. I can't. I can't do this. The 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 fascinating love affair between Bashir and Garak. I was all for, but it's too much. Cisco's beautiful goatee couldn't save him. Also, from yeah, no. Also, for some reason, reality. I thought the I thought bald, uh, bearded Cisco happened way sooner. Yeah, no, it didn't. And it's not until, like, the fourth season. I had to get... I had to go through three seasons before before all of that glory, and it was... For sexy Cisco. For se- yeah. For sex... Mm-hmm. And I just... And it was like, wow. I had to do a lot. Also, Kira gets kidnapped way too much. Does she? Oh, my God. In, like, the first two seasons, she gets kidnapped, like, five times. She's very tiny. She's very, like... Cute. Yeah, but she's supposed to be, like, military... Oh, like, it's very obviously written by dudes. Like... Yes. Because... But the actress they cast is very petite. Oh, no, she's, she's very tiny. But like, she's supposed like, to be... look at her. I would kidnap her. But she's supposed to be, like, Walking embittered... A ter- futuristic like, hallway, and I saw her, I'd be like, look at that! I can yeah. pick that up and take it home! But she's supposed to be, have like, being a gu- guerrilla warfare since she was a teenager and things. Like, I feel like, in general, she's the least likely to actually be able to be kidnapped, but they she gets kidnapped way too much. It's, it's one of those things that it's like, the writing versus the casting is kind of at odds. Yeah, also... Because the writer is a badass, but then they put the cutest, most adorable yeah. actress as also, the character, and then you're like, I would, I would pick that up and take it home. Also, I Odo being in that. love with her, like, and the whole thing is very irritating. Like, the the whole romance aspect of Kira is just irritating to me because the whole thing, like, she keeps hooking up with dudes. That's like you've known them. For a long time, this is just ma- this is just male fantasy because she has known you long enough that if she was gonna have sex with you, she would have already done it by now. <laughs> like, you have oh, known that is true. you that have known true. her for ten years. If yeah. she was going to hook up with you, it would have happened already. 
that all of true. you are fantasizing. That's a good point. I didn't think of that. I'm not thinking about it like that. I'm just thinking about picking up the pop, the actress, putting her in my pocket and storing her away for later. Yeah. Uh, no, she's I'm not adorable. About that. Yeah, no, she's a badass gorilla. Warf- yeah, warf- she was a freaking uh, terrorist. She'd you by now if she wanted to. Yes. So. Yes. No, it's all... Yeah, and then, like, they sure. don't know what to do with Dax. Like... They should just make her make out with everyone. That's the answer. No, well, Dax it's is like Star Trek. I like I the fact that Dax, like, they make her like that. She then becomes really in, like, oh, she was a Klingon ambassador, so she's really interested in Klingon stuff. But they didn't go on to that until like f- season five. Ugh, no, I have so many. Let's rewrite it. In Dax and Commander Riker are BFFs for Evs. And they have an informal betting pool about who can bed the most people. Well, I like the fact that, <laughs> that Dax they has know. been they male. Just... Also, Dax has been male and female at times. Yeah. And like they, tr- they, they play that in, in one episode a little bit. But, but it was the 90s. So, you know, it could be so much better. Yes. Dax has got no yeah. gender, makes yeah. out with everybody. Yeah. Right here. Has a gender, still makes out, with, out everybody. with everybody. They yeah. have a competition. They've got a scoreboard. No. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no, they're competing. Riker's they're like, not, Riker's not in today. deep space. That's none. cool. I made out with an energy being. Yeah. They're calling each other. They're comparing notes, make outs for Evs. <laughs> they're. <laughs> and also. Also, their uniforms have to reflect that they're the biggest whores in all of Star in all of Star Trek. Them so short shorts and well, low the, cut tops. Well, what's funny though is that ma- in the in the way those in the way the writing is, Major Kira ends up dating way more people than than Dax does. Yeah, that's not right. Dax flirts with a whole bunch of people. Or a yeah. whole bunch of people are obsessed with her, but she, but she never seems, but but she doesn't actually date anybody. Major Kira has like five million boyfriends throughout the whole series. Five million boyfriends, and that's all of five. them are people that's, that she's that's known not related to her and Riker's continual. Right. Yeah, but Kira is like the fact that every single person she's dated, she's known before. And it's one of those, like, no, no, that is not how this works. Oh, my God. She's the the Star Trek equivalent of the old scene queen that dated everyone. Yeah. Or has dated someone that's dated. That's, oh, that's how you write Dax. No, scrap that. Riker is the the Riker is. Riker's not even there in Deep Space Nine. Riker's not in Deep Space Nine at all. No, no, but I'm. They're but you're just adding him. him. You're just, You just want to add him over. I just do. I just want to put him in a little short skirt and make him. I want him to live his truth. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I want for Riker. <laughs> she's the. She's no. You make you make her an old lady. Come with me on this deep space right. nine journey. All right. So Dax. Dax is an old lady. Dax is an old lady who can still get it. A. So she's she's Luxana Troy. Kind of, but much older. <laughs> like the kind of old lady that can still get it, but it makes you reevaluate Eartha some things Kit. about your life. We're gonna go with Eartha Kit. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, if she like, were still with us, yes, she God would. Willing, she would be perfect. Yeah, that's who. It, that's that, who I cast in my mind is Eartha Kit. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, think Eartha Kit for a Dax. Yeah. Had sex with every species yes. in the known universe, and she purrs at you. She purrs at you. You don't know what that means, but you're on board. Whatever <laughs> it is, she has had sex with you, or someone you love, or someone you know. Absolutely, there is not. There's, there's no nothing question. She doesn't know. There's no question. You don't know when it happened. You but don't you know there. when it happened. Like your mother's brother's cousins roommate was engaged yeah to her at some point she saw a lot of like 
she's Chekhov's gun in a lot of yeah. the episodes that you're like, how will they get at this? And her the kid just comes swanning and is like, darling, you know that this would make me so upset. And they're Aww. like, oh, Dex, <laughs> I'm gonna make you mad at me. Not after the last time. And then they just <laughs> go off to a cabin together and the episode is over. <laughs> Tax solves it again. <laughs> I think this has no become a immune. this has become a totally deep different deep space nine. Deep expecting. space nine would have a totally different. Her <laughs> cabin number is nine, and that's <laughs> that's it's it. It's not the space station. It's just her cabin. <laughs> the series is focused on her. It's actually a porno. I've just written a porno. I know. I think you just no, no, yeah, no. I've written a porno. <laughs> you've just written the Deep Space Eartha Kit crossover porn. <laughs> I okay. wasn't. I wasn't going in that direction, but apparently, <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I just did. I jumped in whole hog. I was like, <laughs> yes, Eartha Kit. She's fucked everyone in the universe. <laughs> Apparently, all the real problem. Apparently, that cocktail just. <laughs> Q comes over, tries to start tying, causing problems. He's like, "Darling, you wouldn't want me to be mad at you." And he'd be like, "No, only under certain circumstances." She'd be like, "Naughty boy!" And he'd run away, blushing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've just written a fucking porno. Damn it. <laughs> This is what happens. Look for this on a uh, archive of her own username, Lady Cop. I haven't actually written it, but someday maybe. TM, TM, TM. It's mine. You could just write write the little drabble. I gotta yeah. I gotta like copyright the deep space Eartha. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> Like, we took the filter off the show and it immediately don't nove dies into porn. Uh, it's because it's COVID times. That's what's happened. All right. It's uh, COVID time. And also, like, if you've been following me at any point in the world, it's not surprising that Dick popped up. <laughs> oh, that's what Q said. No, that's, that's the name of my new Deep Space Nine. And fiction. <laughs> oh, oh! I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> we were talking was, about this before. Of course, I had no plans of looping I know, it back I, in, but the bourbon said, "You know what would be a good topic of conversation." I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to offer it up as a filler, and uh, yeah, so that's what happened. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> This is this is how we're gonna leave you, our friends, <laughs> on this strange and happy note. I don't know, happy ending. I <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Terrible joke. We've uh, unlocked our dirty jokes now. Yeah, no, congratulations. It's, oh, all bets are off now. Uh, and with that, we were a panel about steampunk after dark at Dragon Con that one year. You already know. Yeah, no. No one wants to know this. What a us. good panel. <laughs> and with that, oh, this geez. has been the Clockwork Cabaret. <laughs> she is Lady Addercop. He is Emmett Davenport. And remember, this is not work we do. It's just wholesome Christian love. We've just discovered a very rare bit of audio from former Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Let's have a listen. I, Winston Churchill, wholeheartedly believe that the Clockwork Cabaret is the finest example of steampunk radio programming. Never before have I heard anything quite so marvelous, and I doubt I shall ever hear anything like it again. Calpurnia, continue on your journey, broadcasting your marvelous music, and sail on to glory!